Hello everybody and welcome to a sort of continuation guide on Marvel Heroes, in this case talking a little bit more about leveling. Uh, in the last guide that I did, the last major leveling guide, I talked uh, more overall, more in general uh, about leveling and this time I want to get more into some really nitty gritty details as well as uh, some bigger and better Nobody examples. Um, uh, one thing that I'm going to discuss a lot more is going to be more about items and how they can help you and or hinder you as you're leveling. Uh, the fact that uh, you can really level uh, very quickly, which is great, but uh, it can also sort of uh, take your character back a little bit to a certain extent with several art aspects. And uh, last time I really focused a lot on level 20 because that's where you start to unlock the legendary quests and basically just go more into, uh, so now you're level 20 and you want to get to level 60. What do you do? How do I do it? Uh, what's good and what's bad? That kind of thing. And lastly, I want to talk a little bit about uh, level 60 as a whole, uh, simply because it's um, it's mostly, do you really need to get to level 60? Like, do, do you really have to? And I'll talk about why I, I mean that later on. Uh, but to get started, I'm going to go ahead and just dive straight into legendary quests, what they are, how they work, and what you need to do. So for legendary quests, they are in essence the bread and butter of leveling in Marvel Heroes. Once you reach level 20, you gain access to them. And then uh, essentially if you just follow them straight through, then you can get to 60 uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so essentially if you open up your mission log with L, uh, then you see here at the very top you've got legendary quests. It tells you what it is, what you need to do where you have to go, all of that kind of stuff. And it also tells you the rewards as well. Okay, so essentially there are three major categories of legendary quests. You have ones that are based on the story. Uh, so you have to go into one of the chapters to actually do something in the story. Uh, uh, there are ones that are in Midtown Manhattan, which is one of the challenges here in the Challenges tab on the Waypoints. And then there are the ones that are based on Terminals, which is this uh, second uh, one right here. So essentially, you've got the Story, the Terminals, and the One Challenge Midtown Manhattan. Okay, Those are the three major areas that you're going to be getting your Legendary Quests. Currently, uh, as I said in the other video, there is a review underway by Gazillion to really balance the rewards with the time to complete. But as of right now, it is generally better to skip the more complicated quests uh, in order to... Um, to uh, that are related to like uh, difficult to find or uh, hard... Uh, bad guys to find or long-term uh, event waiting, things like that. Uh, so things like the uh, the MODOK terminal uh, or Doctor Doom terminal, things like that. Uh, a lot of the Chapter 9 quests that take place in Lower Asgard, you can find, you can have a lot of trouble finding uh, some of the specific mobs that you have to defeat in order to complete them. So it is still fairly worthwhile to skip a lot of those. And uh, for skipping, it only costs 250 credits per level level of your character. Uh, so again, if you go to your log here, then you've got this big blue button that says reroll, and it says you can pay 250 credits uh, per uh, level to roll a new legendary quest. So it's really not that expensive, even when you're at higher levels, because you're going to be making credits left and right. Uh, most of the legendary quests are going to give you uh, typically at least 5,000. Some of them are around 4,700 now, uh, right about there, mid mid 4,000s. But still, it's a lot of credits, and it'll go a long way. Uh, personally, I, I'm actually perfectly happy to spend a lot of credits. I'm actually at the credit cap of uh, 3 million. So I need to spend credits because I frankly have too many. Uh, I know, uh, first world problems, right? So 
one thing that's very important to note about the legendary quests is a little notice that you get right here in green daily bonus available plus one odin mark the very first uh, legendary quest that you complete of the day regardless of if you skipped the old one that you had or whatever will give you an additional odin mark uh that'll show up separately and i'll uh, show you that in just a little bit i'll do a couple of examples uh one other little note is uh a lot of the xp gains and uh, legendary questing uh, one of the biggest uh, assets that you can have with that are the XP buffs, which I mentioned in the other video as well. And uh, part of the thing for that is if your buff runs out in the middle of a quest, don't restart the buff until you're just about to finish. That way you'll get the maximum bang for your buck because you won't have to worry about you know tracking down uh, whatever number of bad guys you need or anything like that. And uh, on that note, just uh, very quickly, I'll go through a demonstration of each type of legendary quests. So I'll start off with uh, Loki here because we actually have the uh, the paramilitary soldier one for Midtown Manhattan. Um, Midtown Manhattan, as far as legendary quests, is actually a, um, a fairly uh, interesting uh, sort of thing where in Midtown Manhattan, a lot of people will just stop and hang out here and just wait up uh, for other people to just do legendary quests. And that's literally all that they do. Uh, they'll come down to Midtown Manhattan, find a bunch of other people, and just skip through legendary quests so that they can get uh, these specifically. Alright, uh, so very quickly, like I mentioned, I'm looking for the paramilitary troops, which are things like uh, Hydra and AIM, even the, um, the what's it called, the, uh, the Hand, uh, all of those guys, they all count toward paramilitary. This is actually a relatively minor quest in terms of uh, the time it takes and all that kind of stuff uh, but basically this is what you want so you can see here I'm taking on uh, a decent number of Hydra people now and one thing to note is you see that oh look we got Walter White nice so Walter White here is the leader or the commander of the group and anytime you have a constantly spawning group like this whenever you have a commander if you do not take out the commander if you do not defeat them then the group will constantly spawn you have this for demons you've got this for the hand you've got this for mgh brutes which can be impossible to track down you've got this for um obviously aim uh and all sorts of different groups of people it's uh it's pretty awesome okay uh, in addition, there are a couple of really nice little things uh, with Midtown. Uh, I'll go uh, later into some more of the specific quests, but uh, this here is actually a really interesting building. Uh, it's like a grocery store or whatever, and there's always gangsters in this little grocery store. There's also gangsters uh, by the bank, which I'll go to later on in the video. All right, so here we got some more, uh, some more Hydra people, or rather some Hydra people. Last time we had AIM. So we'll take them out. These guys will count toward the uh, paramilitary. And this is pretty much all the legendary questing is in Midtown. Tracking down the appropriate mobs and just taking them out. So uh, it's always going to be uh, defeat X number of whatever. Uh, you can have anything from... Uh, you can have anything from uh, just doing the paramilitary like I got uh, fairly lucky with. You can have super villains, which can be really difficult. Uh, you can have the magia, the um, uh, the what's it called, the the gangsters, and then the gang members, all sorts of things. Uh, so I just completed the quest, and you see here there are two distinct Odin marks. There's one right here. Go away, demons! I'm trying to do a video here, getting all up in my way. So there's one Odin mark up here at the top, and one over here to the right. The reason that they're separated is because one of them is the bonus and the other one is the actual reward for completing the quest. And you saw there I got a total of uh, right about 4,600, uh, 4,600, what's it called, uh, credits for completing it. And now look, I've got uh, Who Scrutinizes the Sentinels, which is Defeat Six Sentinels, also happens to be in Midtown Manhattan. And look, since the Sentinel is here, I'll go ahead and take him out. Okay, so like I said, that's pretty much Midtown Manhattan. Uh, one thing to note about Midtown is, especially at lower levels, you can run into one of the issues that uh, you also have with X-Defense, where you very quickly out-level the enemies. So uh, after a certain point, uh, basically three levels above the, um, the range cap, uh, all of the enemies are going to start being gray, so you're going to get much, much less experience uh, for your work. 
So at that point, you should just head out, and then uh, if you want, then you can go back in, and you'll be in the new one, whatever it happens to be. Okay, so that's Midtown. Like I said, a uh, very common stop for grouping for the purpose of Legendary Quest, because if you're grouped in a party, then you're able to take out mobs of all different sorts, and whoever has uh, that specific requirement will get credit for it. Uh, so it's very nice. Now, I switched over to Scarlet Witch here, uh, because she has a, uh, a terminal quest. Uh, which I'll uh, go to right now. Okay, in this case, it is the uh, the Hydra Island with uh, Mandarin. So I might just use. Uh, uh, actually, I can't use her ultimate because she's only level twenty. Uh, so uh, terminals have a couple of really really nice uh, uh, nice aspects to them, I guess you can say. And uh, basically, the the reasoning being uh, a couple of things. Uh, first, they are generally very uh, quick. Uh, they tend to be really fast. Uh, they also tend to... Uh, not only do they tend to go quickly, but they're also fairly simple as far as being able to find mobs, particularly. And uh, not only do you need to find mobs, but then obviously also the, the bad guys, the main bad guy. Uh, but once you once you do, it's really, really easy. In general, most of the terminals are always the same. Uh, this one, Hydra, happens to be a, a different one. It always changes, but uh, essentially the specific requirement for this uh, particular one is I need to take out Mandarin. I also have to take out the Hydra guards and turrets. So the guards are uh, the ones that are labeled specifically as guard. There, we got a, a few guards right there. So you've also got these Hydra Dyna Brawlers. Those are not the ones that you want to take out. Uh, the Dyna Brawlers are something different. Uh, you can still take them out uh, for the sake of experience or uh, whatever other purpose you feel, uh, but they are not part of the quest. Okay, uh, so we can see Mandarin right up here, and we'll just uh, keep following it as best we can. Like I said, this is one of the, the few terminals that is not set as far as the actual structure of the map. So you can potentially have some issues with it, but by and large, um, you will in general have a much easier time with terminals uh, for the sole purpose that you can always go the same path and, and finish it very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, one other thing is with the terminals, you once you have access to them and you're doing the legendary quests, you can do the terminal-based quests in either the green, the red, or the cosmics. Uh, if I am leveling, I will tend to go into the greens for several reasons, and uh, I'll go into that a little bit more later on. But uh, suffice it to say for now, uh, I tend to do it uh, while I'm leveling because I'm really mostly just going for the, uh, for the experience and uh, not necessarily uh, trying to get loot. Uh, but like I said, I'll go into that more later. Don't have too, too much farther to go. Uh, I'll just try to speed up a little here, find a couple of guards. But this is essentially how you're gonna go through terminals. Uh, this one in particular can be a little bit of a drag, uh, trying to find the uh, the guards, but it's not bad, it's really not. Um, the the one with, uh, with Curse in uh, Odin's Palace, that one can be rough. Uh, simply because of the density of the mobs, they can tend to take you out pretty quickly. But it's also a lot smaller than most of the other ones. Um, ooh, look, a mysterious egg. Hooray. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I'll finish up here and then we'll head out to Mandarin. Almost done, I just need a few more, this will do it. Alright, there we go. Perfect. And look, right at the end. So this is another time where being able to teleport can uh, be a huge asset uh, to your character because it lets you obviously skip by a lot of other stuff that you ordinarily would just have to wander through and try to figure out yourself, which can be very unpleasant and rather frustrating, although not too terrible. Oh no! Almost got me. Whew, that was close. So just take out the Mandarin here relatively quickly. He's not too bad. Obviously, the again, this is just a green, so it's not ridiculously difficult by any means whatsoever. But look at that, I gained a level. So again, you see uh, here we've got two Odin marks and one. So the quest itself was worth two, and then uh, I got the one for the bonus as the, the first quest for this character. It's not based off of your account, it is based on a character-by-character -character basis. So once you have a whole bunch of characters, then you can just run one 
uh, quest with each one of them and you'll get a whole bunch of bonus marks and it's super awesome. So that's an example, like I said, of a terminal this legendary quest. Again, point. relatively uh, quick, uh, f fairly simple to I'm do, excuse me. Harley and um, they, they're ones that I typically uh, tend to stick to, uh, except for Doom and MODOK, like I said. All, although those time? are um, have a lot more value as far as Odin marks. I believe they're both worth four. At the very least, they're both worth three. I, I'm fairly certain that um, that Doom is worth four, though. Right? So I switched over to my uh, good buddy Nightcrawler here, my personal favorite character, uh, as an example of a story-based uh, quest. So in this case, I have the quest Appetite for Destruction which takes place in the outer compound, which is a chapter six waypoint. So one thing to note with the, um, the story quests, the story legendary quests, is that um, first off, you're generally going to be going after specific items, mobs, or uh, things like that. Uh, that's more often than not what you're going to be doing. And uh, the other thing is that if needed, it will unlock the terminal for you, or not terminal, but the waypoint uh, that you need. Okay, so in this case, I'm looking for searchlights, jeeps, and ammo crates, right? Uh, just to give you an idea what they look like, obviously, look, here's a jeep. It looks like a jeep. Go figure. I just slashed it with my swords, and it blew up because Marvel, okay? And then here, I believe we have an ammo crate, this box right here. There you go. That was indeed an ammo crate. So part of the problem, at least with this particular mission, is it can be frustrating because you're not going after any of the mobs. You're actually going after items. Um, the ammo crates are actually a fairly commonplace thing. So this right here, this is a searchlight. Uh, it's on little wheels and it looks uh, very similar to, uh, frankly, the bat signal. Um, just obviously without the bat. But um, you can just sort of track them down. Here's another one that has a side view and next to a jeep. So this one can go relatively quickly or not so quickly. And the thing is, that's one of the reasons why I tend to stay away from the story-based ones. Uh, but let's just take a look here. So this is actually worth three Odin marks. So again, if you're going just for Odin marks, uh, the story ones are not necessarily a bad way to go. But the experience and the credits, uh, as of right now, the like I said, the balance is being uh, worked on. But it's not done yet, and uh, so it's still a little bit iffy. I just finished off all the searchlights. I still need jeeps and ammo crates, though. Uh, I'll see if I can uh, find them pretty quick here. One of the nice things about Nightcrawler is that he's a fast little guy, so we can go around and uh, get this done at least uh, pretty quickly, hopefully. All right, so here's a nice little uh, pile of uh, crates, so that's nice. Got another egg, too. All right, there we go. All right, got all of the crates. Now just gotta find Jeep. And uh, another thing, just as a, a side note, uh, general for uh, quests, if you are going to just farm for Odin marks, get a character that can teleport, be it by the Ziggurat of Cardul or somebody who does it naturally, whether it's Scarlet Witch or Nightcrawler or Cable or whoever it is, just get somebody who can teleport. It makes it so, so much easier. Be especially with something like this because you have to search around the entire place trying to track down, in my case, just one more Jeep. And there we go, speak of the devil. All right, so you see again, we've got the three Odin marks from the mission and then the one bonus. And in this case, I got just over 6,000 credits. So pretty decent, uh, not bad at all. And I happen to get the uh, terminal one for Curse uh, from my good buddy Nightcrawler here. So we'll head back to the, uh, the waypoint here and go back to the school. So just overall, uh, like I said, the, uh, for the story quests in general, they will unlock the waypoints that you need. Uh, one thing that's very important, make certain you're on the correct difficulty. At uh, When you reach level 25 and 45, something very important happens. You unlock heroic and super heroic difficulties, respectively. So what you want to do is press T to open up your hero roster, and this is where you switch your difficulty. 
Okay, so I obviously I don't have a story mission right now, so I'll see if I can skip just a couple uh, to get them. Ah, perfect. So if you didn't notice, at level 60, the cost to skip a quest is uh, 15,500 credits. So virtually nothing. I'm wasting credits right now because I was at the max, and even though I'm picking up 6,000 credits, I didn't actually get any of them. So uh, back to our quest log here. Uh, we see, uh, use the chapter 8 waypoint to travel to Castle Doom, blah, 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 blah. And it says here at the very bottom, make sure that you are on super heroic mode to ensure you get credit for the mission. Whenever you get a story mission, always make certain that you're on the correct difficulty. It tends to be easy to tell because, again, at 25 and 45, you unlock the next difficulties. And if you get something at 25 that's in, say, chapter 9 that's still going to be on normal. But if you're at 26 or 27 and you get something in chapter 1 or 2, that's going to be on heroic difficulty. So just make certain that you think about that and uh, be, be sure that you go to the correct one. Uh, just make sure that you read it and uh, and see that, that it's right. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that regardless, you're going to get ones that are appropriate for you. Uh, it can be ones that are later on in your current difficulty or early in the next difficulty after you unlock it. In addition, uh, uh, if you ask uh, somebody in chat or whatever, uh, the community is really good and generally more than willing to help you just take out Doom and Loki, uh, the last, the the final two major bosses. So uh, once you defeat Doom, you unlock the next difficulty regardless of your level. So if you defeat uh, normal Doom at level 20, then you're going to unlock Heroic at level 20. And then you can actually start potentially getting early quests uh, for heroic for the next part of the story. Uh, just a thought, don't have to do it, but uh, if you're bent on not really skipping quests, that's an option for uh, at least partially controlling what you're able to do. Okay, so uh, that uh, concludes uh, this brief demo of the, the three major types of the legendary quests, and uh, essentially that's, again, your bread and butter for getting from 20 to 60. I'll talk more about uh, what to skip and what to do as far as uh, various things and all that. Uh, um, the first thing that I'm going to be talking about is more about items, how to use them, when to use them, what to use, all of that kind of stuff. So stick around, and I will be right back. So, like I said, now I'm going to be uh, talking more about items that are very, very helpful for leveling. I talked a decent amount about it in my previous video about uh, all sorts of stuff, uh, the artifacts, Uru Forged, medallions, rings, legendary item, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, you also have five regular slots. You've got slot one through five. Uh, what do you do with those? And there are actually a couple of different things that you can do. I'll switch over uh, back to uh, my good buddy Loki here. There are a couple of very, very good leveling affixes that you can find in the so-called regular gear. So, uh, for example, uh, let me see what I've got on him. Uh, so here we go. Uh, gain one spirit when you hit with a basic power. Regenerate nine health when you hit with a basic power. Both very, very good. Very, very helpful, obviously. Uh, I'm going to swap out a couple powers while I'm talking. So just like with artifacts and um, the rings and insignia and all of those kinds of things, uh, regardless of what you're going to be doing, having some sort of regeneration, health, spirit, uh, both, uh, they will be massively, massively helpful while you are leveling, uh, particularly the health and the spirit regeneration, because the faster you can regain spirit, the faster you can take stuff out. Makes for much, much easier leveling, lots and lots of help. Okay, um, and let me, uh, let me go ahead and quit this. Wait, why isn't it working? Um, uh, the other one, the other really major aspect or the other major affix that you want to try to look for is one that I've got on his helmet here, which is the plus 17 XP per enemy defeat. That might not sound like a lot, but think about it. You are defeating hundreds of enemies over the course of um, even a, just a few hours. And that is a lot of experience, all right? Not a great deal, but if you can think about it in terms of, uh, for example, if you've got three or four items that each have a, uh, a plus XP aspect or affix, 
they're going to be enormously helpful. Uh, one of the things about that is um, that generally you'll see it uh, from the mid-teens. So, uh, for example, on Loki, I've got uh, 17 XP per defeat, and I've seen it up to the late 40s, so like 48 or 47 per defeat. Okay, so uh, it really depends on your luck and also your level. As you level higher and higher, you're going to be able to get more XP per defeat. Okay, uh, one of one of the other really nice affixes that you can get is the bonuses to Riff and Sif, which we all know are the rare and special item finds, respectively. Uh, one of the nice things about these is that they can let you get uniques. The rare item find allows you to get unique items uh, that are, in general, far greater than anything else that you might have. So for example, uh, here on, on Thing's Cosmic Mike Pants, uh, because that makes sense, I've got 7.7 .7 special item find as well as 23 XP per defeat. So, which is a, a great thing. Uh, the cosmic items are generally very, very good and obviously very helpful, which is awesome. But one of the issues is that you'll run into the fact that after a certain point, you're going to be far, far outgrown from your items, especially if you're focusing on leveling as fast as you possibly can. If you're doing that, you're going to end up with items that are potentially 10, 20, even 30 levels below you. I personally had a huge issue with Black Panther that I didn't even realize, where I had him at level 50, and I actually had a level 5 cosmic item on him. I know, it's a shame. It's a terrible, terrible thing. But the biggest question that you have to ask yourself is whether or not you're going to replace whatever gear you've got. Is it really worth it? Because you have to think of a couple things. If you're going to find gear, then it's unlikely you'll find it just in the course of doing your legendary quests. That's probably not going to happen. What you need to do is go and specifically find some gear. Okay, uh, but on that note, um, in my opinion, this is obviously all my opinion, but in my opinion, it really depends depends on your affixes. If you've got really nice regeneration, uh, be it health and or spirit, if you've got really nice riff and sif, and that XP per enemy defeat, then maybe it's not worthwhile to replace the gear. It certainly could be, especially, I mean, if you get a unique, obviously, or anything like that, or a new cosmic or whatever, but in general, uh, purples and especially blues really won't uh, give you an enormous bump. The only thing is that if you're really having a lot of trouble uh, with, you know, uh, having really bad uh, TTL or TTK, the uh, time to live and time to kill, so in other words, you're dying too fast and not killing stuff quickly enough, then you can uh, think about really going and upgrading your gear substantially. But I personally have not had a problem uh, other than essentially just finding a new cosmic or a unique or whatever and being like, oh, I guess I'll upgrade now, uh, whatever it happens to be. Uh, so again, the, uh, the uniques are an obvious exception to this. And on top of that, um, they, uh, pretty much anything is going to be worse than a unique. Even a bad unique is going to be better or generally better than a cosmic, uh, especially a cosmic that's at a lower level. Uh, so again, in my opinion, it really depends on the affixes you have. If you're happy with them and if you're not really dying, but if you're being efficient still, then there's really no reason to focus entirely on uh, getting some new gear. Uh, that being said, if you do want to replace gear, you have to uh, balance it with the buff time. Because assuming that you're playing with buffs, you've got two options. You can either wait until the buff is out, or you can go in while you've still got the uh, the XP boost. Uh, so one of the best things is that you can do it as quickly as you possibly can. The best way, the most efficient way to get new gear is to head into X defense. Because not only are you going to get pretty decent XP regardless of what level you currently are, but you're also going to be able uh, to get a, uh, a lot of new gear, which is obviously the whole point. Um, you can also leave early once you've got gear. I really don't recommend that simply because the end chest is really nice, or it tends to be, but if you're really strapped for boosts, uh, which you shouldn't be if you're doing your level 7 quests, or uh, your chapter 7 quest rather, uh, then, you know, do whatever you want. But uh, again, in my opinion, I've got two major suggestions for uh, X defense if you decide to go that route. First is to go in at the later level 
bracket. So in other words, um, we see here, uh, let me just go in and show you. Where uh, with X defense, uh, you you've got the total of 20 to 29 or th or uh, 30 to 39 or whatever it is. Go in when you are a slightly later level. Okay, that way you'll be able to equip the stuff sooner. It'll be it'll be better off. Okay. In addition, uh, whatever items you get will probably be in the mid range of that, and. Uh, Especially if you're looking at 35 to 40, that would be a really good time to go because then, uh, especially if you get a unique, you won't have to spend all the resources to upgrade it to uh, additional levels. Uh, one of the nice things about uniques and uh, one of the reasons that you will never, ever, ever, ever throw away a unique, never do it. Uh, also, don't donate them. Uh, there are plenty of great things you can do with the uniques. So, for example, here at our crafter, you can upgrade uh, unique items to level 40, 50, and 60. So the level 40 is actually fairly inexpensive, but if you've got a level 37 or a level 38 unique, it's probably not really necessary to go to 40. Uh, level 50 and 60 are, are both substantially more expensive. Uh, they require unstable molecules, which are really pricey. Uh, they do drop, but fairly rarely, so not really recommended for that. Uh, the only reason to do that is if you've got really no other choice if you got practically a perfectly rolled lower level unique then that's the only reason that you should keep it and and do the level 60 at least okay um but uh like i said go into the instance the x defense relatively early or uh like sort of in the middle as far as the bracket is concerned because that way you'll be able to use the vast majority of the gear that you'll be getting sooner and in addition especially if you do the uh the 31 then you probably won't have to worry about upgrading any uniques to 40. now if you do it at like the mid 20s then certainly it would be worth it to upgrade to 40 once you uh once you have that and once you're there Okay, uh, but again, that's just uh, that's up to you if you wish uh, to spend the uh, spend the credits and spend the resources. But typically, every ten levels, if you're really struggling for it, hop into X Defense once or maybe twice, and you'll be able to upgrade all of your gear in a matter of minutes uh, without a doubt. Much much easier. You can even help it out uh, with the uh, with an additional boost or, or something like that. Okay, uh, the other thing uh, with uniques, uh, a couple other things, uh, just more reasons to not get rid of them essentially. Uh, we'll head back to our crafter friend. Recently, uh, we added in the exchanges, so you can trade in three duplicate uniques for a random unique, which is for a hero, so it could be a hero specific or an any hero unique. Four duplicate uniques for a random usable unique, in other words, something that your current character can use. Somebody dropped something nice. Uh, and then there's five duplicates for a specifically for an any hero unique, right? Not one specific to a hero, but any hero uniques. Okay, you can also exchange them for credits that you can donate, uh, credit chests that you can donate to uh, any of the vendors. Uh, you can get stacks of relics or boxes of runes, right? Um, the only one I might recommend would be the credits. Uh, but really not heavily recommended regardless, okay? So, uh, that pretty much uh, covers it for uh, the additional aspects of getting new items, and uh, I hope that it, it helped out. So, with that, I'm going to move on uh, to uh, talking about going up to level 60 and your character how they work. So, with that, if you want, upgrade your items every 10 levels or so uh, by hopping into X Defense. Other than that, do your legendary quests, and in general, don't worry about items unless you want to really get those good affixes. So now, on to level 60. Alright, so just like with items, one thing that can happen with your character on the way to level 60 is they can sort of get behind on themselves. Now, every time I start off a new character, I always have some kind of plan for the powers, what I'm going to do, where I'm going to put the powers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the problem is when I really get into leveling and I end up uh, going up, you know, five or six levels in the course of... Uh, literally a half hour or even less, then one thing I tend to forget is putting in power points, okay? So there's a couple of very important things you could do here. 
Oh, excuse me. And this will go along with the items as well, is first off, be in a hub. We had a recent update that allows us to be in a hub without the boost timers going down. They used to go down when you were in hubs, so everybody had to be pretty efficient or uh, or just not worry about their boosts, right? So be in a hub, and the other thing, I'll open up uh, this power here. So you see I've got 19 available points. That is essentially half of the points I've gotten leveling thing here to uh, to 20. Right, so clearly I've, I've put some points in around, and uh, I know approximately where I want to put at least some of them. But the problem is, I don't really know entirely where I want to put all of them. Uh, and, and the ones that I do know, some of them I want to put into later powers that I don't have unlocked yet. Okay, so one of the things, I, uh, I only really played a uh, thing for the purpose of my previous video on leveling, so that I could demonstrate a lot of the aspects. Um, but for now... The, the biggest thing is, as you're leveling up, you can't be afraid to experience with uh, some of the powers. Okay, Every character has a lot of powers, most of which are at least relatively decent and certainly mostly workable. Uh, you can do something with them. Okay, um, But part of the issue is that uh, too often when you have a final build idea, it can't line up with leveling. Uh, by and large, the most common reason is simply because uh, you don't have the uh, capability of getting the powers. Uh, between the uh, the level 52 reviews which are going on, and or if you're, it's just a new character where you get the ultimate power at level 52 instead of uh, at level 30, uh, between that and just uh, not really having very good combos or not very good passives, or anything like that, it can be very tough to build out a leveling build, okay? Uh, but uh, one of the nice things is that throughout this, uh, you, again, can't be afraid to experiment, and the story can give you up to three retcon potions per character. The retcon potions are how you reset your power points, okay? Uh, so we'll go over to my stash here, and I can uh, show you what they look like, for those of you who don't know. So you see we got this uh, little blue bottle here, retcon device. Okay, they stack into 20, and you can just toss them in your, uh, in your stash, or wherever you want. You can hold them on uh, whatever you want to do, okay? But uh, that's uh, part of where experimentation can really come in handy because if you don't like it, you can just change it. And then if you do like it, great. You can go and get some spare retcon potions for other people. Uh, one of the other things is retcon potions do drop as loot on occasion, although they are fairly rare. Uh, that being said, they are controlled by special item find, not rare item find. Uh, but... Uh, once, once again, just in general with powers, uh, you want to have at least a relatively bi viable build. In my first major guide video, the uh, the uh, pretty much all-encompassing guide, I mentioned that uh, you should have a relatively basic build for all characters. You want to have a fairly strong basic power or very cheap um, or uh, very cheap inexpensive spirit spender uh, that will be your uh, your sort of bread and butter just smash 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 so in this case I got Rocky Punch for Thing where he just goes and smashes stuff alright I don't want that as the uh, the final one I um, I believe that the uh, the bruising punch was the one honestly I don't remember I'll have to look at the the build again either way you want one of those you want some kind of AOE clearing so that's area of effect just some sort of big like boom and clear everybody out okay you also want a good solid um, single target spirit spender okay so the difference between the AOE and the single target one is the AOE is generally small damage to many people as opposed to large damage to one person okay so for example uh, we'll go to Nightcrawler because he's a good example obviously he's level 60 so not a um, not a leveling build this is a, a finalized build or at least pretty much a finalized build. So in my case, I like to use the uh, the sword uh, the swordman build uh, uh, with uh, some of the uh, the teleporter and uh, and the passives basically, right? So X slash is my my single target killer, and then I've got the infernal brimstone as the AOE as well as the uh, flash and grab, uh, both of which are AOE and can potentially take out people. Okay. Um, so just just as a a basic thing, and then the uh, the swashbuckler slash is the the melee attack that I use on him. All right. So again, just as a most basic 
what everybody needs is that. Uh, even as you're leveling, you can get different powers that fulfill those requirements. And again, it doesn't matter who it is, what it is, what they're doing, or anything like that. Just go ahead and do it and try and see what works. Okay? Again, if it doesn't work, just retcon it and don't worry about it. Right? So, uh, that should help you at least a little bit on your trip to 60. So, so far, remember, do your legendary quests. If you grow out of your items, go ahead and basically every 10 or so levels, get some new items. Make sure that you spend your power points as efficiently as you can or as e effectively as you can for what you've got. And now, with that, I'm going to talk a little bit about... How badly do you need level 60? So the most common thing with any sort of game like this is I have to be max level, I have to be max level, it's going to be so awesome, yay, yay, yay. The biggest thing with this is that you really don't have to be level 60. It's not required for the game, it's not required for quests. The only thing that's really required for that is to get into the level 60 versions of X-Defense and the Cosmic Terminals and all of that kind of stuff. So you see here the X-Defense is specifically for level 60s. Same uh, if you're interested in the PvP that has level 60 only, Hollow Sim, everything. Everything has level 60 specific stuff, okay? But, at the same time, do you really need it? There are basically two major reasons for you to go to level 60. The first one is to continue to play the character uh, by prestige and or uh, simply uh, gearing them up. So in my case with Nightcrawler here, I'm trying to do both. Incidentally, I still haven't found my stupid shark, but I am gearing him up fairly well. I've got uh, my artifacts pretty much figured out. I, uh, I'd like to get a cosmic medallion, but I've got the legendary, most of the uniques. I mean, I, I, I'm fairly well geared for Nightcrawler. Not perfect, obviously, but fairly well. Uh, I do want to go and get... Um, uh, get more prestige and all that stuff at some point. Not right now, but at some point. Uh, so again, that's the first reason, is to gear up and or prestige. The second reason is essentially to have... Oh wow, somebody's dropping rooms. That's exciting. Sorry. And Jeez, oh, somebody's being generous. So... Uh, the second major reason is to simply have the XP and synergy... Uh, or the XP and hero boosts. Buffs. Synergies. Whatever. So, uh, for those of you who don't remember, the hero synergies are accessed by V uh, by default on the keyboard. Okay, so see, you've got the uh, the Nightcrawler synergies in this case, and what the synergies are. This, These are all the synergies that I get, and then these are all the ones that I don't have, either because I haven't unlocked them or mostly simply because I don't have them equipped. Uh, so, essentially, there are two key points for the synergies. Uh, first is level 25, and second is level 50. Each character gets two synergies, at uh, one at each of those levels. Once you're at level 50, you no longer have a hero synergy. In addition to that, again, with the XP synergies, the way that the XP synergy works is fairly straightforward. Uh, you start off with the first four heroes, where the first hero gives you 30 second, uh, brings you up to 50, third up to 65, fourth up to 75%. Okay, once you're at four heroes at level 60, then level 60 gives you 5%. Okay, level 50 gives you 3%. So, let's think about this. Uh, we'll go back here, so the Synergy XP... Each level 30 grants you 1%, each level 50 grants you 3%, and then 60 grants you 5. After you have 4 characters at level 60, those are the numbers. So, the thing is that with the transition from level 50 to level 60 can be uh, the most harrowing of all of the leveling. Especially if you have a character that hasn't had their 52 review. That's right, I said has not. Because that means you already have had all of your powers for 30 levels, uh, not 30, 20 levels, and you still got a ways to go. You need a lot more experience to get to the, the levels coming up, and it can seem a lot more grindy. At the very least, if you have a character that either had their 52 review or is new, and they get the ultimate at level 52, you have something to look forward to. But other than that, not so much. So the question is... With 
going from level 50 to 60 taking so long, is it worthwhile to get that extra 2%? Probably not. But there are things like simple completion. Right now, there's a total of 1,920 levels you can have amongst all of the characters. I am currently at 811. So I essentially have about half of the levels that I am capable of having uh, once I have all of the characters. Okay, So completion is one obvious example. Uh, the other thing is that what you can do is level all of your characters up to level 50, or except 4 going to 60. Once you have 4 at 60, every other one goes to 50. Once you have them all at 50, then you can do that final push from 50 to 60. Because not only is it going to be nice because the uh, they're going to be relatively fresh, uh, it'll be like playing a new character practically, but at the same time it's going to be much easier because that hero synergy XP bonus is going to be a lot higher. All right, You're going to have a lot of 3s instead of a lot of 5s, but getting up to those 5s is going to take a lot less time when you have a bunch of 3s. Okay, the other option is that you can simply get to 60 for the sake of being at level 60. I personally am sort of a combination of the completionist and um, and getting the synergy bonuses as soon as I can, uh, especially for some characters. Uh, like again, I, I know I'm picking on him, but with Black Panther, I personally didn't enjoy playing him a great deal. But now I got him to I level 60. He's at level 60. It's great. I'm happy. He's perfectly happy sitting in my hero roster. Okay, I don't really feel the need to play him. If I ever want to, I can. He's there. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm essentially done with him. Okay? So, like I said, that's, that's my story as far as do you truly need level 60? The answer is probably not. But it's certainly not a bad thing to go up to 60. Right? If anything, get your 4 to 60... Uh, four characters up to 60, the rest to 50, and then go the 50 to 60 uh, one at a time from there so that you have the maximum bonus possible. Right? The last thing that I'm going to go over is going to be uh, just some more demonstrations with various legendary quests, as well as some uh, some more general tips with not only not only leveling, but legendary quests in general. Alright, so uh, last but certainly not least uh, for this video, I'm going to be demonstrating essentially as many of the, uh, the legendary quests as I can, in addition to giving just some general tips, not only for leveling, but also for legendary quests. Okay, uh, Like I said uh, earlier, with legendary quests particularly, go ahead and stick primarily to the terminals and Midtown Manhattan. Uh, I personally really prefer the terminals simply because in Midtown it can be a real beast to try to track down some specific mob that you need uh, for your legendary quest. Now granted, while you're doing that, you can be taking out a bunch of others and it's happy, happy, awesome, awesome. But, by and large, the terminal maps are the same, and you can just go in, do what you need to, and be done with it. Makes it so much easier. Right? Uh, another just general tip for the legendary quests is if you're simply going to get Odin marks, then uh, it's it can be much easier to uh, just not not skip anything and just go regardless of what the quest is. So don't skip story uh, because you don't like it. Don't skip the longer terminals or anything like that. If you want Odin marks, go and get the Odin marks. This is especially true uh, once you reach level 60 and if you're still running the, the LQs on the character the XP and the credits really don't matter. If you just want Odin marks, just go and do them. Okay. Um, so uh, another thing uh, with the with the story is uh, just uh, again once you're at uh, 45 and or uh, 25 and 45, uh, you unlock the heroic and super heroics. Uh, just want just to drive home. Make certain that you change the difficulty so that you don't get caught trying to do the uh, the story legendary quests in the wrong 
um, in the wrong difficulty. Very, very unpleasant. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do several demos for more legendary quests, basically whichever ones I can find. Uh, just going over essentially what you need in order to do to them, uh, what a good place to look we is, all of that go. kind of stuff, particularly with the story quests. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started with that. And uh, since I'm on him, I'll go ahead and start off with Black Panther and the one that he happens to have. So the first thing I'll do is I'll uh, just give him a team up. Like I said, I know I said I don't really like Black Panther, but uh, that doesn't mean I, I'm not going to play him at all. So we'll go ahead and give him his team up and at least have some gear. Not super great, obviously. This can be also a demo of how you don't really need to have the best or, or even completely geared uh, in order to do much. So again, uh, Savage Supervillainy, this particular one takes place in Chapter 7 in the uh, dinosaur jungle so we'll head on over there and we'll see what we can do so heh, you can see how much of the story I've done I uh, got to watch the uh, the intro cinematic okay so for this particular quest we need to take out uh, Sauron the cliffwalkers and the cliffwalker shrine Okay, so what I'm looking for is Sauron's cave. It's an instance that's hidden in here somewhere, right? I also need uh, the Cliffwalker Shrine treasure room, okay? So we'll go ahead and just take out some of these people. All right. Let's see what we got. doop a doop -a -doo. Ooh, egg. That's exciting. So right now I am in the dinosaur jungle, and the problem is I have to be in Sauron's cave, right? So you can see, uh, well, you probably can't read it, but in this paragraph here it says all objectives must be completed in Sauron's cave. So the first thing I have to do is really find that, which is somewhere in the dinosaur jungle, so make sure that we don't cross the river there. Uh, so we need to find, maybe it's where the exclamation mark is, that's actually probably where the questers are. Uh, let's see here though. So this is one of the reasons why I really don't like story quests. Uh, it's because you tend to have to search around a whole lot uh, to try to find something that you probably don't really care too much about. And let's see, how many marks do I get for this? It's three Odin marks, so that's decent. I believe the maximum currently is four. So, I mean, not terrible obviously. Uh, did I do something stupid? I think I did. Ha! Ah, I did. Oh well. So, this goes to show us a... Oh no, I didn't. I did. Eh. So this goes to show you again how, uh, how you really shouldn't be stupid. I just realized that everybody here is a very low level. So what does that mean? We have to go back. Because previously, I was on normal. And I'm not taking my own advice. We need to be on super heroic. There we go. This is going to be much better. I thought those guys were way too easy to kill. Alright. This should be much better now. There we go. Level 58. Alright. Much better. So obviously this is a case where I really don't care about the experience because I am level 60. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is a great example of a story quest. So uh, this is the again the savage super villainy uh, for those of you just joining us and We are looking for Sauron's cave because the entire thing has to be done in the cave uh, We will be looking for the cliffwalker tribe that have been hypnotized which you can tell because They're basically the only people wandering around But again, these guys are worthless. I still have zero uh, defeats that count towards my uh, that count towards my quest because we have to find the cave. Now, if memory serves, Sauron's cave tends to be in sort of like a little cliffside thing, so we can see. Oh, there's an event going on. That event is a uh, is part of another legendary quest. Obviously, not the one that I'm on right now, but might get into that later. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Let me get the splinters. They're always nice. 
Eh. Alright. If I were Sauron's cave, where would I be? Jeez. So, once again, this is why I don't like story quests. Whenever you end up having to track something down, the ooh dupe. Whenever you end up having to track something down, be it a specific mob or a specific location, anything like that, you're always going to be creating trouble for yourself. And it's always going to be very unpleasant. Oh, wait, we may have found it. Sacred Valley! Boo! I want to go to Sacred Valley. If I wanted to go to Sacred Valley, then I would have. There we go, Sauron's Cave. So, we finally found Sauron's Cave, and now we can go and finally do the quest. So again, we're looking for the Cliff Walkers, which are all these tribes people. We don't have to worry about the bugs, but they can actually be very frustrating. So in here, we're looking for three things. We're looking for the Cliff Walkers, which are these guys. We're looking for the... Uh, the Cliffwalker Shrine, which is going to be an instance that's also in here. And then we are looking for uh, Sauron himself, which is going to come later on. So we don't have to worry about that too much right now. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I forgot my little summon people. See, that's part of the problem with playing too many characters. Let's see, there we go, there's some some cliff walkers. So we're just over a fifth of the way done. Like I said, looking for the uh, the cliff walker uh, shrine as well, which is an instance within here. So it's like an instance inception, which is very exciting. Let's see what we can find though. Not a whole lot. Lots of bugs, though. Whole lot of bugs. So this bridge, I believe, leads us to Sauron, which doesn't help us too too much. For oh yes, I'm prepared for extinction. No worries. So one thing to note is that since this is part of the, this is a story quest, it is actually part of the story proper. I'm going to go ahead and use my ultimate just to get rid of him. Plus I like Black Panther's new ultimate. This will also help in a quest that we do as part of this. So see, we can get a, a fun little, um, what's it called? Artifact. This is not Wakanda, this. but it should suffice. And that that portal will take us back to the dinosaur jungle, which is not where we want to go. We actually want to find this Cliffwalker shrine first, in addition to taking out all of these bad guys. So we'll go ahead and do that. Ooh, vibranium. Take that. Not having a whole lot of luck though. I always like to keep the map full screen, especially for these things because it tends to make it easier to see where I still have to go which is a huge help with things like this having a guy with a couple of Mac 10s doesn't hurt too much either at least as far as clearing okay, almost done with the cliff walkers but we still need to find the shrine Oop, doop. Where'd he go? Aww. I hate it when they teleport. That makes me sad. Alright, Cliffwalker Shrine. Must be back here. Almost done taking these guys out. Not much left to explore. The only thing is right down here. In the southwest. There we go, this should be it. 
Dun, 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 dun. This bird's about to take flight. This is what we needed. Huzzah. So anytime you see something that says uh, clear a particular area, be it the treasure rooms or whatever, it just means that you have to grab the treasure chest. Easy peasy. Alright, and now I'll just take out the the last few of the cliff walkers that I need. I need 13 still, so not too, too bad. They can get a little tough to find, though. Bingo. Yuck. Still need five. I have nothing left. Oh, cry about it. You have nothing left. Boo hoo. Poor Black Panther. I need to find some cliff walkers. Five to be exact. This one's rough. So it seems that this is one of the ones where you have to track down basically every single type, or not every single type, but every single one of a specific type in the area in order to complete the quest. Which is exceedingly frustrating. I might even have to just go back leave and then come back in just to be able to do this because there's nobody here Oof. all right got the entire thing pretty much explored and all that i can find are bugs which does me no good you're a bug this is one of the issues with several legendary quests where you need something specific, be it a specific mob or a specific um, some something like the um, like the what's it called uh, the ammo crates or something like that, and you end up having to find every single one in the area. It's pretty lucky that I've got the um, the ability to see things on the screen, on the map anyway. Oof. I think I'm going to have to go out and reset the instance, which is not pleasant. Oof. So that just shows you how frustrating it can be to get these things completed. And nobody respawns when you come back in. Blech. Oh, this is terrible. My weakness shames me. It's okay, we still have a bug. My strength fades. Yuck. Huh. Ha! There's one. Oh, jeez. Need one more. Are there any in the shrine? Did I miss something back here? I need a moment. Cause that would be nice. No, of course not. Of course there's none in the shrine. Cause that would be nice. My weakness shames me. Oh yes. Poor you. Man. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Jeez. This is ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. I don't want to have to reset the instance. 
But it looks like my, I'm gonna have to. Oh wait, nope. Ha ha! Yay! Ah, oh, jeez, finally. Whoof. So just like before, this was the first one that I did with Black Panther today. So I got the three for the mission and the one bonus for the first one. Although I have to say, this mission, totally not worth it. This one is definitely one that you're going to want to skip uh, regardless. So I'm going to head, go ahead and body slide back to, back to base. Really nice. Alright, so, I know it took a while, but that's it for the Sauron's Cave, the uh, very exciting, uh, very exciting legendary quest there, and uh, with that, I'll just move on and uh, show you guys a few more, so enjoy. Alright, so I'll go ahead and dive into the rest of the demos here today, and I'll start off with some fairly some simple ones. We'll uh, start by going into door? Midtown Manhattan uh, here with Loki. If you remember, uh, I actually unlocked a, the uh, scrutin who scrutinizes the Sentinels for this. Uh, so basically what I'll be doing for most of these demos after what happened with Black Panther especially is I'll go ahead and just do the initial portions, just show the general areas where to go, that kind of thing. I won't finish the vast majority of them uh, simply to save on time and that way uh, you don't really have to be bored unless it happens that I finish them very quickly. So obviously uh, for who scrutinizes the Sentinels, it takes place in Midtown Manhattan. You can see here it says go to Midtown. So very exciting. And what we're looking for are mutant civilians. Uh, they have life bars above their heads, uh, assuming that you you either hold alt as you're uh, wandering around or, um, or you have it set to permanently say everything. I recommend having it permanently set, but that's just me. So typically, the mutant civilians will be hanging out uh, on the street corners, but sometimes you will see them in the middle of the roads. Uh, so like, here's one right here, mutant civilian. And essentially, around them, you'll see a sentinel come down, just like that. Uh, the sentinels are actually pretty nice to, uh, to kill regardless of your, uh, your situation, be it that uh, you're just working towards uh, the... Uh, the legendary quest itself, or if you're just wandering around uh, either waiting for a specific spawn or something like that. Uh, really doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to have uh, some great results with the Sentinels. They give a lot of experience, uh, particularly if you take them out before they uh, get to the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, the civilians. So that's always nice. Uh, so like I said, I'll just wander around a little bit more, see if I can find uh, one or two more. Uh, it used to be that the civil there's one right there. Uh, it used to be that the mutant civilians were a lot more common in Midtown. Now they're uh, fairly rare, but uh, still certainly not bad at all. Okay, and this is this is actually a really nice uh, quest to end up getting. Again, the experience from taking out the Sentinels, uh, plus the eventual experience from uh, getting the uh, quest done. Speaking of which, this uh, particular quest is worth uh, one Odin mark, and then the uh, the credits and uh, the credits and uh, the experience. So not extremely worthwhile, but you can see why uh, it goes relatively quickly. Uh, so with that, I'll go ahead and uh, move into the next one. All right, everybody, we're going to move into the next sort of phase for. Uh, my demonstrations here and this one's going to be all of the uh, terminal missions so obviously there are only a set number of terminals and therefore you can only have so many missions uh, involved with them in this particular case I've got the mission for the hood uh, one thing that is very important to note uh, with the terminal missions is that they are also part of the story um, so it is very important to realize that uh, you make certain you're going to whichever one is appropriate. Uh, eventually you'll get to the point where you realize pretty much immediately which is which, uh, so it won't be as much of a problem, but in this case uh, we need to defeat the hood, 
the dockyard enemies and the wooden crates. So the wooden crates are these big stacks right here. And even just at the beginning here, we can have almost all of them. So there you go, just with that I've gotten all the crates. And the dockyard enemies are these guys that look like uh, the gangsters from uh, Midtown Manhattan. So if you're, uh, if you're going after the hood guys, uh, those won't count towards the kill count for the purpose of the quest. Uh, but it's never really bad to, uh, to take out bad guys, right? Uh, so this one I'll actually go ahead and run through the whole thing since it is relatively quick. And uh, you can see we've got more wooden crates and the story mission here is different because in the story mission you actually end up uh, destroying these engine parts, uh, which you'll, you'll see uh, later on. And it is important to note that uh, Loki here, although I haven't gotten a uh, story mission yet or I haven't started talking about the story missions, uh, he is level 29 right now, uh, just leveled up not too, too long ago. Uh, but since he's level 29, I'll be I'm getting the relatively low level uh, heroic difficulty missions. One thing to note with uh, many of the terminal missions and several of the uh, story missions is when you have a set number of bad guys to kill, uh, like for example in this case 75 dockyard enemies, a lot of times you can go to the secondary areas in the terminals, uh, which would be this right here, and you can find a lot of the enemies there. So you don't need to take out all of the enemies and then head for the bad guy. Uh, for example, I've got 66 right now. Let's see if I can teleport across this. Nope. Um, so there should be enough guys over here uh, to let me complete the mission for, uh, for that particular part. So there, see, I just uh, completed the dockyard enemies, and I'm fighting the hood. So it's kind of nice, and uh, eventually you can get to the point where uh, you're you're better with that uh, to make it easier on yourself. So I'll take out hood uh, relatively quickly. Unfortunately, I don't have my ultimate, or else I would use it just for the sake of time. But we can take him out pretty quick. We got some good stuff. Just gotta spawn my guys here. Hiya, hiya. Almost got him. So just like with any terminal, this one is uh, fairly simple, and this is actually one of the ones that um, that allows you to. Uh, go forward and um, uh, not go forward, but this one is one where the map doesn't change. Uh, there are a couple terminals where the map changes. This is not one of them. The map is always the same. The path that I took is one that you can always, always, always take for this. So it should be a really big help for you later on. But uh, that's it for um, the Hood Terminal mission. Uh, very simple, very straightforward, just like many, many of the terminal missions. And so with that, we'll move on to the next. All right, everybody, welcome to the first of the story mission uh, or the story based legendary quest that I'm going to be talking about. This particular one I'll be doing with Loki and the mission is Trash the Outpost. This one uh, takes place at the uh, beach in I believe it's either chapter two or three. Let's see here. So it's chapter three. Now. We notice that here, Buccaneer Beach is where we're supposed to go. There's a problem, though. I'm level 33, and I'm still on normal. Okay, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm uh, I'm basically too high level to be getting normal uh, difficulties unless they're at like chapter nine. So, gotta make certain that you're on the correct setting. You'll always be able to know it because uh, it'll these actually unlock all the waypoints uh, again that you need so we go to chapter 3 at Buccaneer Beach and we have to go to the Hydra Outpost okay the Hydra Outpost is actually part of a quest uh, that's a, a portion of this particular area and the quest we actually get right by the waypoint for Buccaneer Beach so right here the Lost Patrol 
that actually takes place at the uh, the Hydra outpost. So more often than not, the Hydra outpost is going to be in the northeastern portion of Buccaneer Beach. It can be tough to find, but uh, you'll be able to see it. It's it's a uh, a portal, just like many many other portals that we see throughout the game. All right, so we're just going to head straight up. Oh, look at that! Oh, we got lucky. All right, so the Hydra outpost. It's always in this little enclave looking thing just like this so if you essentially go across the uh the northernish the northern ish part of uh buccaneer beach you should be able to find this enclave and get into the hydra outpost okay so just like with uh, all story missions i'll uh, start off by saying that uh this this is one of the things where again i am not a huge fan of doing the story based missions unless it involves the very, very end of the chapter or whatever it happens to be. Uh, because that way I can kill two birds with one stone and get the major chapter reward in addition to uh, completing the, uh, the mission itself. So that, that being said, for this particular legendary quest, we need to take out Hydra enemies, which is everybody in here, and we also have to destroy the tech barrels. So we see tech barrels in a couple of legendary quests, and essentially they're these things. They are the uh, the colored barrels that blow up when you hit them. Okay, uh, so we just got to blow up 20 of those and take out 45 enemies. I'll go ahead and free these guys while I'm here. This is actually part of the uh, the actual Lost Patrol quest. These guys are members of the Lost Patrol. So we can go ahead and free them. We get a vendor summon from this quest, uh, the, the Lost Patrol quest. It's not really that exciting. I'm personally not a fan of it, but we'll go ahead and get it anyway. And now we're looking for Grim Reaper. Just like so many things, uh, most, uh, the vast majority of the instances in, in the uh, story part of the game are randomized. So you do have to wander around a little bit, but we do have this nice question mark here that in this case does indicate where Grim Reaper is because we have to take him out as part of the Lost Patrol mission. So we'll just go ahead and teleport the rest of the way here. We can do it a bit faster, thankfully. Hiya! And there we go! So this one's actually pretty nice as far as legendary quests go. It is three Odin marks, and you get uh, some pretty decent rewards. I got uh, 4,600 credits here, and you get a decent amount of experience. So it's uh, one of the story quests that you can't really complain about too, too much. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and move on. All right, so with that, I'll go ahead and uh, conclude and give you guys a brief summary of everything. I hope that you enjoyed the video first off. I hope that it can help you level up, and more importantly, I hope that my uh, little tips and demos of the legendary quests can help you uh, complete them uh, yourselves. So just as a brief summary, remember that uh, legendary quests uh, can make uh, leveling within Marvel Heroes absolutely a snap. It makes it much faster, much more efficient. And uh, in addition to the experience points that you get, you get your Odin marks. And as a reminder, if you're uh, planning on gearing up your character, then uh, your uh, you need a total of 700 Odin marks, 300 for the legendary item, and then 100 each for your blessings for your uh, artifacts. Uh, in addition, uh, just to remember, try to stick to the Terminal and Midtown Manhattan quests. Uh, those will generally give you the, uh, the best bang for your buck. Uh, take less time, uh, more efficient, and even in Midtown when you're trying to f track people down, you can still be taking out others, uh, which will be a, a great help for you. And uh, keep good quality gear for as long as you can. Upgrade only when and if you need it. And if you do need to upgrade, go ahead and do it at the uh, later level bands. Uh, so in the, the late 20s, late 30s, late 40s. Uh, because that way you'll be able to easier equip things uh, once you go into X defense. And uh, you more than uh, once you get the, uh, the good quality things then you won't have to upgrade very frequently but look for those affixes the uh, straight up plus health plus spirit and plus regeneration of each as well as that ever elusive but so awesome 
plus XP for enemy defeats. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, just determine whether or not you really, really, really need to be at level 60. Uh, are you doing it just so that you can get the synergies, uh, the, the hero and the XP synergies? If you are, it might be worth it just to hang out at 50 until later on, but if not, go ahead and uh, make it all the way to 60. That being said, remember, this is still a game. It's still supposed to just be fun. Play it however you want. Play it however it makes you happy yourself. Uh, so with that, I will say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. We're gonna play the game, the PlayStation all day With Metal Gear Solid to check and play And from Omega Bells to Resident Evil Just play for the fun, cause we got it going on